I would like to invite Kelsey. So Kelsey, you and I actually met through um, your company because I was, when, my, when I was working as a fund manager, I had invested in the company that Kelsey works for. So you are, um, I would say, you are the only one of my leading ladies who's not running her own business. However, uh, in your role as a venture capitalist, you invest in and work closely with startups. So tell us a bit about your work and how you came to be doing what you work. Absolutely. No, I'm happy to do that. And I actually really enjoyed your introduction at the beginning, talking about how different people find their purpose in different ways. I feel really lucky to be here because actually my path's been a little bit more traditional and that I work for you know, some traditional job for a company. And I think that that's actually a nice um, compliment to the other people that have been up here today, who uh, many of which have had much more disruptive changes in their lives. And I think that there's a lot of different ways um, to find purpose. And for me, kind of two of the things I've always been passionate about. One is working with people. And so even if I go back to my uni days, I, um, you know, I enjoy counseling and doing career counseling. And so I've always been very passionate about helping empower people to pursue their dreams. And I think that's a theme of, of, of several of the women tonight. Um, and then on the other side, about technology. I think that you know, even, even in our lives, just the, um, the radical change that technology has brought. And there's some negative sides to it, but there's so many positive sides. The fact that I can pull out my phone and immediately connect to my family half a world away um, is, 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 is wonderful. So those are two areas. They, they come together in venture capital, actually. So we back fund companies, new technology, innovations. Um, but really, the part that, that I'm the most passionate about is, is backing the people, the entrepreneurs, many of like the people you heard from today, who are so passionate about bringing these new technologies to market. Um, it's really, really hard sometimes. <laughs> uh, there's you know so many companies fail. There's often um, uh, just you know some really challenging dynamics. Uh, venture capital is known as an extremely male-dominated environment. Um, a lot of big egos. I get to deal with all of that. Um, but at the end of the day, it is, it is about helping people realize those dreams and then also about helping them really create a sustainable business, which generally means making money. Because um, I'm actually a capitalist at heart because I believe that if you're making money, then you, then you can create um, a sustainable business. And as a venture investor, if we're making money, then I get to then back a whole bunch more companies. And so sometimes people think of our industry as being you know, maybe greedy or very money focused, but I see it very much as a tool um, to enable us to get to empower more people, bring more technology development, and, and bring more dreams into reality. Cassie, when, when you were a child, you had a very different idea of what you wanted to be as a grown-up. I don't know if in the audience people had sort of, um, aspirations of being something completely different to what they do now, but uh, you followed that dream for a very long time, right until the university, and then something happened to change it all. So tell us about that. So from age five to age 22, I was dead set on being an astronaut. And I actually um, went to Stanford and did mechanical engineering and began Aero Astro Grad School to follow the stream. And I was asked, um, as part of a, an award competition, I was asked, how do you plan to fight the world's fight? And I got, you know, I got, this was a pre-question, I got a few months to think about it. And I went away and I realized I had two choices. Um, I could come up with a reason that being an astronaut would fight the world's fight, but I realized that I really wanted to be an astronaut for the sexiness factor. <laughs> or I could use it as an opportunity to do a bit of soul searching and figure out if maybe there was something else I wanted to do that I felt would more help fight the world's fight and maybe have a little bit more impact. And, um, and so it was actually that month that, that I decided actually, you know, being an astronaut isn't what I wanted to do. And I went back to school and I changed my degree. Um, but it did get me thinking that, that part of one of the wonderful things about space travel is it helps us understand planets, and particularly planet Earth, um, and climate change, and the different dynamics going on in our planet. So I then switched into renewable energy and began um, a decade of studying different new technologies that can help us uh, fight climate change and, and uh, explore different energy options, and that's what uh, got me into venture capital. And you were saying that venture capital obviously is a very male-dominated industry. So as a successful woman in a male-dominated industry, what advice do you have for younger women who might be also in similarly male-dominated industry? A couple of things. Well, one thing to quickly build on um, from the last question as well is that for me, it's my entire life has been a series of small pivots and changes. And actually, we encourage our companies to do this as well, just to be constantly learning, questioning their own beliefs, figuring out 
you know, um, this is their current hypothesis about their, their customers. Um, but actually, if they get feedback that says, actually, their customers want this, well, then maybe they pivot a little bit and go after that. And for me, that's actually been my career path. So that's part of the reason I switched from being an astronaut to, to renewable energy and then to venture capital and then to technology more broadly. Um, but I think that that is, um, I call it actually, it's a little bit corny, but I call it the working hypothesis. So what is it that you, know, you want to do for your job and what's your current hypothesis around that? Um, but maybe there's a few of them. So for me, I have three different working hypotheses for the moment about what I'll be doing in five years. Um, and they change on a regular basis. Uh, and you know, I kind of test them and then I talk to different people who do those things. So I think that that's been a very effective way for me to kind of experiment with different things and, and when I do career coaching, um, uh, help approach it that way. But to specifically to your question about working in a male-dominated environment, one thing that I think is really helpful is knowing why you're doing it. Um, so for me, this is definitely really difficult sometimes, and it's not just because it's a male-dominated environment, right? There's, I'm sure that anyone who's ever had a job has had time, and it's just really difficult. <laughs> and, um, and so taking a step back and being like, I know why I'm in this job, um, and I can fall back on those reasons, can be really, really helpful. And then if you realize that those reasons aren't actually adding up anymore, then it can be a good reason you know, to, to actually reconsider. Um, when I'm working on an investment, there's, you know, inevitably due diligence uncovers some things that often make me reconsider whether I want to make the investment. And so one of the things that I do is I often appoint a cheerleader, somebody on the deal team, who is the, the holder of the reasons why we like this investment, so that when I get demoralized about, you know, actually maybe this is going to be too hard or maybe the numbers aren't quite working up, they remind me why we're so inspired about doing this investment. And I think that that's, again, something that can be extrapolated to um, the challenging work environments at times. And then, and then the last point I would uh, recommend is that if you do know why you want to be in the job, when those difficult times come, to hang in there, because um, I have found that it has gotten quite a bit easier as I've become more senior. And, um, as, and, and when I became a partner and got to start making the decisions, it's actually great because now I'm in a position where I can make it hopefully easier for, for women who follow or more diverse uh, people. And so I think that that's like a really great reason for women to stay in and to help change that. I think that's, and I, and I just so agree with you. I think it's almost the way I describe it is that finding a purpose. You know, the job you do, you've got to really know why you do it. And if there's a purpose to it, it makes it easier to put everything into perspective. All the negative things that happen, you kind of, you understand why you've jumped into that. Thank you so much, Kelsey. It's really good to have you here.